So now in my recent videos, I already spoke about one very important trick when it comes to weight loss and how when you use that trick, it will help you burn your fat. But for that trick to really work perfectly, you have to master and control one thing and that is your insulin. And I'll tell you why it is the most important thing when you have to burn your fat. And also in this video, I'm just going to show you exactly how to do it. So if you're someone who's really confused with the whole concept of weight loss and how do you really burn that fat or those extra kilos that you're holding, well, keep watching this video and you might understand it better. So why you should control insulin, what are the foods that will help you trigger insulin for a shorter period of time and how can you master controlling insulin and use it to your benefit when it comes to burning that extra fat. So I'm going to make it very easy and let's not waste any time and let's get started. Now let's say you've eaten a meal and your food looks like this. Now everything in this food, that is everything that you see in this plate is going to be broken down through the process of digestion and eventually it is all going to enter into your bloodstream. And most of these foods that enter your bloodstream will eventually be in the form of glucose. And at this point, insulin will be released and what insulin will do is that it will take the glucose from these foods and it will help them to get stored in a cell. And if there is any excess glucose that you've consumed through your food, then it will store it as fat. And once insulin has done this entire job, it will start to reduce or it will gradually go lower. That's why after you eat, your insulin levels are higher is because your insulin is taking that glucose and it is doing its job of storing it in a cell. Now, when you are not eating, your insulin levels are really low. So at this point, it encourages your body to use your stored fat as an energy source. So a hormone which is called a hormone sensitive lipase that is responsible for breaking fat and using it as energy becomes more active. And this process is known as liposis where your fatty acids are released from the fat cells to be used as energy. And that is how your body burns fat. So just look at this in a very simple way that keep your insulin levels low and if you do that your body will be encouraged to use fat as energy. Now what are these foods that you should eat that will help you control and keep your insulin levels low? Well there are many foods out there but you should just focus on this one thing that is focus on foods that have a low glycemic load as compared to having a low glycemic index. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, let me just make it even simpler. Now, glycemic index will measure how quickly a food will raise your blood sugar after eating it. In short, it will tell you whether the food is like a race car or a turtle. And a glycemic load tells us how much a typical serving of a food will raise your blood sugar. And it considers both the type and the amount of carbs. In short, it will tell you whether the food is a big wave or a small wave in the ocean. Or how much did that typical serving raise your blood sugar? So let's say I take a watermelon for example. Now the glycemic index of a watermelon is 72 and 72 is considered as really high. That means it will really raise your blood sugar levels. But here is the fun bit. If you just take a simple serving of that watermelon, which is around 120 grams, the glycemic load of that is just four, which means that the overall impact of this food on your blood sugar levels is really low. So basically a watermelon can raise your entire blood sugar, but if you usually take a very typical serving, it doesn't really affect your blood sugar as much. That's why I focus on foods that have a lower glycemic load as compared to a glycemic index because this will give you a better insight of what you are eating as compared to the food in general. Now since you've understood both, let's focus on the glycemic load and understand it a bit further. Now any food that scores under 10, you can consider that as a primary carbohydrate. Now you can consume more of these carbs as compared to other carbs which have a higher glycemic load. Now any food that comes in the score of 11 to 20 that is considered as a secondary carbohydrate. Just make sure that you consume them about one fourth of your primary carbs as they have a higher glycemic load and will release more insulin. So to control it and not raise your blood sugar, we try to maintain it in a portion. Then you have the cheat meal zone, which is anything that comes above the score of 20. Now these are the foods you should just try and avoid consuming them overall. But in case you feel like really having them, then do watch the other video, which I will put the link in the description so that you understand when to have them. And make sure you only have them during that eating window and maintain the portion size. Now you know exactly what your glycemic load is and the scores that it should stay under. Now what are the foods with a low glycemic load and how will it help you with your weight loss? Now let's start with your proteins. Now most proteins that you would consume have a very low glycemic load, almost close to zero. 
So even if you take a portion size of almost 100 grams, they are all under the score of 10 and mostly close to zero. And it's also quite similar with your nuts. So something like a 30 grams of a portion of nuts are also around zero to two when it comes to your glycemic load. But since mainly carbs have an effect on glycemic load, here are a few of them based on their categories. These are some of your beans and legumes. Well, here you will notice that some of these have not much impact on your glycemic load, while some of them really do have a little more than that. Then you also have some of your low glycemic fruits that you can consume and people who are diabetic can also go with some foods that have a low glycemic load. Then you also have convenience foods which you should ideally stay away from them because you can see it right here where even a small portion of them has such a high glycemic load. So a small portion of this food will just raise your blood sugar levels. Then you also have categories like your meal replacements and even your protein shakes. So you can see how the glycemic load is and how it affects your blood sugar levels. Now this category is generally high in glycemic load. So have them as little as you can, especially if you're looking to tone down. So even most rice and grains also do turn up in your high glycemic load. So just make sure that you're consuming small portions of them. Think of consuming them in the form of like a mini thali or like how the Japanese eat. With that you also have your breads that can be consumed but should be consumed in as small portions as you can. Then you also have certain snacks where you should ideally eliminate them altogether if possible because you can see like these portion sizes are really small which is what most of us don't even closely consume and they have a low glycemic load but they are very dense in calories. Even things like your candy and sweets which are very dense in calories and not just that they will also keep your insulin levels really high for a longer period of time. If you still feel like eating them just make sure that you have them in a two hour cheat window which is once a week as they have low nutrients and a lot of calories. And when I crave something like something which is really sweet I would always try and make sure that I eat just for the satisfaction to satisfy that taste as compared to indulging in it. Now with that you also have your baked goods and cereals. Some of them are quite like what we love. But just make sure that if you feel like consuming them just maintain your portion sizes and especially for those which you can see that are above 10 you should really try and cautiously consume them. And then you have your beverages. Now to be very honest that most of these beverages are best to not be consumed because they spike up your blood sugar. And it's always best to get your calories from real food as compared to getting them from beverages. Because I know beverages are easy to consume but they have a lot of calories and they keep your insulin levels really high. Now, when it comes to these, we have to understand that most of us are not bodybuilders. Now, bodybuilders use a lot of these sugars to drive insulin to build muscle mass. But as I said, that most of us are not bodybuilders. And it's best to avoid consuming any of these sugars as it will go straight into storing as body fat. Even though these sugar alcohols have a low glycemic load, they are bad for you and avoid it as much as you can. But if you feel like having them, do have them during your cheat meal zone. Now what I've given you above is just a gist of all the foods that have a glycemic load and based on their categories and the amount of food. But if you want to know a specific food and what is the glycemic load of that food, then you can just go on Google, typically understand how much it weighs or how many grams would it be and Google will give you the answer for the glycemic load of that specific food. So you understand the impact of that food you're eating on your blood sugar levels. Now in case you feel hungrier, just make sure that you go for your veggies, especially the ones that have a very low glycemic load that is closer to zero. So feel free to consume them a little bit more because for Firstly, they have a lot of nutrients, so you don't really need your multivitamins as you can just get them from your vegetables. They have tons of fiber, which is really great for your gut. And they are also low in calories, which eventually is your goal as you're looking to tone down. So in case you're hungry, just make sure that you choose foods that have a very low glycemic load, especially those primary carbohydrates, because as compared to protein, they are lower in calories. Well, there you have it. Now make sure that you use your insulin to your advantage when it comes to you burning down fat and also just make sure that you focus on the glycemic load of a food as compared to the glycemic index also if you haven't watched this video then do watch it it will give you a lot of important insights and a very important trick when it comes to you wanting to lose that weight and if you have any questions feel free to comment below and until we meet again next don't stress and be awesome